as you just saw in that video, and anybody who's at home and didn't see it, obviously I'm not going to show that video on here, but anybody who wants to see it, it's just a pH video by uh, Bozeman Biology and uh, by Mr. Anderson. If you look it up on YouTube, you can find that. Uh, he started out the same place I'm basically going to start out. Talk about water. Talk about what water does all by itself. Without adding an acid or a base to it, you get hydronium hydroxide ions. You don't realize this, but you do. Water by itself actually ionizes. It breaks up into hydrogen, hydronium ions and hydroxide ions all by itself. Not to a very great extent, but it does do it. Every now and then, a water molecule will bang into another water molecule, right? And knock off an H. The hydrogen bond is so strong it actually pull an H off of one guy and accept it by the other one if it hits the right way with enough energy. But it just happens very rarely, okay? But every now and then, a water molecule will bang into another water molecule will make a hydronium and make a hydroxide. Now, because for every one hydronium you get, you get one hydroxide. Remember, one guy had a lose at H. He became the hydroxide. <coughs> the other guy became the hydronium. Because you have one of each, you actually don't end up having water is still neutral. It's not acidic or basic. You're not increasing the concentration of hydronium or hydroxide. All right? But um, you do have them. To a very small extent, you have them formed, hydronium and hydroxide. How small of an extent? Well, if I have a, a beaker of water, a liter of water, okay, um, I would get about 0 0.0000001 moles of hydronium ions and that same number of hydroxide ions in that liter of water. That's a very small number, as he wrote it as 1 over 10 million, I believe. Okay? So in... Pure water, uh-oh, like that, now it's going to be goofy, ah, there you go, in pure water, at 25 degrees Celsius, you get 1 times 10 to the negative 7th moles of this hydronium ion, and 1 times 10 to the negative 7th mole of a hydroxide ion. Now, that number t turns out it's going to turn out to be uh, kind of important for the pH scale because that's what people realize that we could do. Instead of writing down that's an ugly number, it's a small number. It's 0 0.0000001 moles per liter. I don't want to write that number down all the time. Okay? It would be nice if I didn't. What would be nice? You know what would be nice? A guy who came up with a pH scale said, well, it would be nice if I could just write the, the power down. And what's the power of 10 in the hydronium ion concentration? 7. So pure water is neutral because that's just the power, okay, to which 10 is raised. That's what a log is. Those of you guys who are in books class right now are doing logs, different kind of logs. But we're going to do um, logs, logarithms here, all right, which are talking all from base 10 perspective. You guys are doing other ones, right? Uh, so a uh, power of uh, rate that 10 is raised, that's what a logarithm is. So the, the log of this guy, as you're going to see, is going to be 7. And that's where the pH neutral scale comes from. And it's also why you're going to see in a minute. The hydronium and hydroxide tell me whether it's an acid or base. Those numbers go up and down. Now, they go up and down for this reason. This is something I kind of have to cheat a little bit. In Chem 2, you're going to get a lot more information on this. Turns out that this, did you notice this arrow goes both ways? All right? goes both ways. And if you, normally I write that as, uh, like that. Okay? Well, that's an equilibrium expression. And in Chem 2, you're going to have like three chapters on this. It turns out there's something called the equilibrium constant. And the equilibrium constant is a very special one for the water. Uh, it's called Kw. All right. uh, you have to just take it on faith right now. In Chem 2, you'll learn about um, you know, why this is the case. But it turns out that the concentration of the hydronium and hydroxide, all right, the, the product of those two guys multiplied together, is always going to be the same constant, same number. In other words, if I were to increase this guy's concentration by adding an acid to it, if this guy got higher, say he got higher, say he got, he went up to, let's just say, one times ten to the negative fifth. By the way, is that a bigger number or a smaller number? Negative it's bigger. Negative five is bigger than negative seven, isn't it? See? Okay. Well, if he went up to one times ten to the negative fifth by increase, I added more hydronium ions into this solution. What would have had to have happened to the OH? It would now be what? Negative, Negative what? Ninth. Ninth. 
such that when you multiply the two of them together, the constant in form, which is called kW, would always remain the same. It turns out that the product of the hydronium and hydroxide, you kind of just have to take my word for it at this point until we get to the equilibrium chapter. All right, but we, you know, we are, not everyone's going to take chem 2, so that's why I'm covering it now. Uh, the product of the hydronium times the hydroxide is always the same number. And I bet you can tell me what that number is. It's called kW. But what does that number have to be? If I multiply this guy by that guy, what will that number be? 1 times 10 to the negative 1. What do you do with exponents by multiplying them together? You add them. So I would get what? kW would be hydronium times hydroxide or 1 times 10 to the negative 14th molar squared. And that number never changes. kW for water, if the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius and I have pure water, it's always going to be 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. And if I go and change, if I add some stuff to it, I make the hydronium a little higher, I'm going to make the hydroxide lower. All right? And vice versa. If I add a base to it, I make the hydroxide higher, I'm going to make the hydronium lower. This guy is always constant. And I know I could use this to tell. By the way, this is where the, um, you'll find where the actual 7 neutral on the pH scale comes from. Okay? You should put a big box around that guy, because that's a really important equation, all right? Because you're going to be using Kw, because I try to try hydroxide a lot. And I, a lot of times it's written like this, by the way. It's written, and he did this too. He put brackets around it. The reason he put brackets is the brackets in chemistry, he didn't say this, but brackets in chemistry generally mean concentration, concentration in moles per liter. Yep, it means in moles per liter. So you can write it like that. That's how we'll be seeing it most of the time. Now, as he correctly explained, if I add something that increases the concentration of the hydronium ions, makes these higher, I call that something an acid. Okay, higher concentrations of hydronium ions make solutions acidic. And if I add something that increases the concentration of the hydroxide ions and vice versa, lowers the concentration of the hydronium ions, it makes something basic. That's pretty much the theory. And we'll show you the same basic chart he showed you, I believe. Very similar, anyway. Of things uh, on the pH scale. And then I'll try to show you how to calculate pH. All right, we got that copy. All right, so if I take a look at this pH scale, we've seen this before. You don't have to copy any of this down. All right, milk, approximately water, pretty neutral, okay? And as you, there's no surprise for most of these. You guys probably know that lemon juice, vinegar, battery acid are clearly acidic. And basic stuff, you're not, notice you're less familiar with basic things. Uh, law, you don't know what that is, but that's just a solution of ammonia, of sodium hydroxide. Uh, that's the kind of stuff they use in Drano. Ammonia, used for cleaning. Milk of magnesia, it's like an antacid. Uh, baking soda. All right, all of these are slightly basic. You're more familiar with uh, uh, acidic things like all kinds of citric juices, uh, like lemon, lime, uh, apple, even apple juice, uh, you know, going to be slightly on the acidic side. All right, but mostly of, either because of the uh, vitamin C or whatever, all, other kinds of acids they have in there. Um, why? Why seven? Well, do you remember a minute ago what I said? Look here. Just a minute ago, we said that, that one times ten to the negative seventh was, yeah. Why does it say adult fish die? I, oh, that's where, at this point where if the, if, if, the, if the stream were to become that acidic, it would kill a fish. You don't. I guess this, I found this chart online. It probably was used to illustrate something about environmental, you know, streams and stuff like that. All right, so look, 1 times 10 negative 7. Remember this. That's what it is at plain old water at, tw at room temperature. It's 1 times 10 negative 7. Well, you know, the guy who invented the pH scale decided that it's kind of silly to write the actual, you know, 0.0000001 or 1 times 10 negative 7. He said, just write down the exponent. 
He worked, I believe, I heard an old video I saw, at a bodily, a soda bodily plant. So he decided instead of writing down the whole con the exact concentration of, of hydronium ions, he would just write down the exponent. He would just write down to keep track of the uh, power to which 10 is raised. That, by the way, is the definition of a logarithm, the power of 10 in a number, right? That's what a log is. When was the last time you guys had logarithms? First period. This morning. Seriously? You've never had it before this? Then, then you all know it's the power of 10, right? In the old days, we used to, have to actually have to do logarithms using a chart. But now, you get to use your calculator. I don't know if he's going to let you. Who, who do you have for I don't know if Hook's going to let you use the calculator, but I certainly will. Um, and I'll show you how to do that. It's pretty, it's pretty interesting. We're doing it the exact same thing. The pH is simply the negative, because it's just easier to write down the power. So now you can go to Hook and tell him, now I know why. Because up till now, you're probably, well, what's the point of doing a logarithm? Well, one guy found a practical reason for it. The guy who had to keep track of the acidity of the soda decided that it's a lot easier to just write down the, the uh, power instead of writing down the, the whole concentration out. And that's what he did. And that's what the pH is. The power of 10 in the hydronium ion concentration. Okay? It's just the power of 10 in the hydronium ion. You don't need to, I'm going to do a couple of examples of logarithms just real quickly. I'm sure Mr. Hook will be happy that I'm doing this with you and you'll probably be able to answer these. Okay, but I don't need you to write these down because I don't want it to confuse you. All right, because I'm going to go on to the specific pH calculations in a second. But just write a few, I mean, just, just watch me do a few of these and see if you guys get them right. Okay. All I want is you to tell me the log of the following numbers. Okay, so if I gave you 1 times 10 to the third power, three. what's the log? Don't write these down. What's the log of that number? Three. Everybody agree it's 3. All right, what's um, sorry, 100's log? Hmm. Everybody agree it's 2? What is 100 in a uh, exponential notation? 1 times 10 to the second power, correct? So that would make him 2. What do you think? Point zero 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 one's log is one two three four, and it's a negative four, right? Because it'd be times ten to the negative fourth power. It would be right. Have we got that? Yeah. Okay. What do you think the negative log of point zero one would be? Well, what's the log of point zero one? Negative, negative two times a negative <laughs> is two. And that's basically what you're going to be doing. You're going to be taking the negative log of some number. And most of the time, that number is going to look like this, because you're going to be dealing with very dilute solutions of acids and bases. Okay? So it'll be numbers like this, with, with exponents that are to the negative power. All right? Because of that, you're going to take a negative of it. All right? So that's the actual equation. pH equals the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration. That negative in front of log doesn't mean inverse log. We're going to learn about inverse logs probably uh, tomorrow. Maybe today. I don't think today. But we're going to learn about inverse log. How to do these things backwards. Yeah, probably tomorrow for sure, actually. Um, but negative just means you're going to take the opposite sign of it. All right, so it's time to do some examples. Okay, copy this guy down. Now, this first problem, it's really very easy. How many people know the answer already? What? Three. Correct. Okay. But, let's set it up. I'm going to only deal with, in Chem 1 class, this, this year, in Chem 2 it's going to be different, but in Chem 1, we are only going to deal with strong acids and strong bases. We're going to assume that anyway. Okay? We're going to assume we have a strong acid and a strong base that breaks up completely in solution. So if I have HNO3 okay, breaking up completely in solution, then I know 0 0.001 molars 
and channel 3 is going to give him. Here's what's actually happening. And I would like you to write this equation down. HNO3 plus H2O is going to go only in one direction, 100% that way, and give you what? Well, that H is going to donate. You don't have to draw the arrow, but yeah, it's going to donate to inform a hydronium ion. And what's going to be left over over here? The nitrate ion, oops, three, minus one, okay, right? And if I have 0 0.00100 molar of that, I get 0 0.00100 molar of this and 0 0.00100 molar of that. That's just basic stoichiometry, you know? It's a one-to-one -one ratio in this case. So the concentration of this guy, 100% of it goes over here. I get 0 0.001 more of the hydronium ones. So that's my, that's my concentration. The pH is going to be the negative log of the hydronium, which is the negative log of 0 0.00100 molar. And basically, that's 1 times 10 to the negative third, isn't it? Right? So what's the power of, of 10 here? It's 3 negative 3 times a negative, your pH of this solution would be 3. And you're done. That's your pH. It's just the power of 10. Now, how can I make this harder? Well, I could do a bunch of things differently. First off, I don't have to give you a nice easy number like that. What if the number were 0 0.00274? You can no longer just say, well, since 2.74 times 10 to the negative third, it's going to be 3. You can't do that anymore because that's not a 1 there anymore. So, you know, to do log, are you guys doing logs like that for numbers like this? No? Yeah, how, what are you guys doing? Just just powers of 10? That's all you're doing? No. no we're doing like conversions between 1, base 3. Oh, oh well, then you're, that's, that's different anyway. Uh, yeah, okay, that's harder than what we're doing here. This isn't this easy? This is easier than what you're doing in books class then, right? Yeah. Should be. All right. Well, the nice part about this is you can't use your, you can't just do this in your head, but you can do it on a calculator. As I'll show you one next example. Watch. Now, in this case, I'm told I have 0 0.003 molar solution, and I'm not told I have an acid. I, I have a base. So I have a different thing entirely going on here. Bases react with water differently than acids do. Bases react by dissolving in water and increasing the hydroxide co uh, ion concentration. Okay? So my reaction isn't going to be like a minute ago. What do I have for my reaction? A minute ago, I had... HNO3 plus water yields, hydronium, whatever. This is just going to be calcium hydroxide for my equation, breaking up in solution. And we have done this before, haven't we? Haven't we done this before? Last chapter, AQ there, AQ there. This guy had a little S there. And I've got to balance it with the two there. Got it? Now, assuming that this is a strong base, which, by the way, I don't think it is, but that's okay. Assuming this is a strong base, which I'll, that's all I'll give you on. That means 100% of it breaks up. Okay? What happens here? What tells me I've got 0 0.00300 molar of that? Now, think of the stoichiometry here. How much calcium ions will I get from that? If they all go that way, 100%. 0 0.00300 molar, right? But what will it be for this guy? Remember stoichiometry? you got to worry about the coefficients, right? So it's going to be 2 times 0 0.00300 molar. you got to multiply it by 2, right? So in other words, 0 0.00600 molar. Now, here's the problem. I can't use that number. Because is this the hydronium concentration? No, it's the hydroxide. So I, when there's trouble, you call KW. <laughs> when there's trouble, you call KW. What does KW do? KW said hydronium times hydroxide are always the same number. They're always 1 times 10 to the negative 14. Remember that? 
do I know? So I know this guy is 1 times 10 to the negative 14th more squared. I know hydroxide is 0 0.006. Okay? So I know the hydroxide is that number, 2 times 0 0.003 or 0 0.006. I know this guy never changes. He's a constant. And I'm solving for hydronium. So if I rearrange that, what's going to happen when I rearrange that? What am I going to get? What's hydronium going to equal? 1 times 10 to the negative 14th molar squared over 0 0.00600 molar. Correct? See what I did there? I mean, I'm skipping a little step there, but by now I would hope you could do that much algebra in your head, right? You could all do that much algebra in your head. I mean, this equation is the equivalent of A equals 2x. Okay, so I'm just kind of skipping ahead and showing you when I rearrange it. What do I get for my hydronium? Do you, now, you've got to get a calculator out and do this now. What do you get for your hydronium ion concentration? Get a calculator out. You have to press in. How do you press in? 1 times 10 to the negative 14, 1 EE, negative 14, divided by 0 0.006, and what do you get? What did you get, Jackson? 1.67 times 10 to the 12, everybody got that? All right, good. Now, you know the formula for pH. pH is the negative log of the hydronium concentration. Got it? So it's the negative log of 1.67 times 10 to the negative 12. How are you going to do that? Well, that's the second part of this one that makes it hard. Two reasons this one's hard. Well, actually, three. Three reasons this is hard. Let's uh, stay by stop. Look up here. Let's look at the three ways this was harder and, more, and different than the previous one. A, it was a base, not an acid. So I was not given, all right, the hydronium. I was given the hydroxide. Two. A, two, A, two. I have two of them. I had to multiply by, you know, there's two of these hydroxide ions, okay? And C, how else is it different? Well, when I get my answer over here, it's not just times 10 to the negative, uh, 1 times 10 to the negative something. i got to use a calculator. So you all have a different way to do this in your calculators. I don't know you know, whatever calculator you have. Find out, the, find your log button on there and find a way to press in 1.67 times 10 to the negative 12, the log of that. And then, of course, it's going to be the opposite sign of whatever your answer you get. What would you get, Haley? thought you were doing well, who's got it? What do you got? Uh, you got 11.8? Spencer got? Everybody else get 11.8? Find a way on your calculator. Everybody's calculator may be plugged in a slightly different way. Because uh, you, you depending on what your log button uh, does. But basically, you should all get, if you do it right, if you figure out how to use it, 11.8. Okay? And notice something about this. You'll know if you're right because the number is always going to be close to the exponent. You see? It's going to be close to that, whatever that exponent was. It's not going to be exactly the same. Does it make sense that a base would have a pH of 11.8? Yeah. Just like the previous one made sense that the acid had a pH. What was our acid's answer last time? Three. Okay. So that's how you do these. Now, I'm going to do, um, show you some other twists and turns tomorrow and then give you a worksheet. But in the meantime, you get to work on some problems, which I just realized I don't think you could do some. I'm going to pick out the ones that you can't do. Uh, and give them to you. I think they're going to be, um, for the most part, on page 478. Yeah, these are the ones to do. I'm going to put them up there in a second. Page 478. And I think you could do most of these that I had picked out, but I, I did not get to one thing, so you may not be able to do something. Um, yeah, you could do up to and including up to 48. From 43 to 48. Or no, no. 42 to 48. Yeah. You can do that much. Some of them are really easy, and others are like this. Okay? A little bit harder.